In this presentation, we will try to understand basic data types in Python. So, without any further delay, let's get started. We have the following topics in this presentation. The first topic is integer data type. The second topic is floating point data type. Let's first try to understand integer data type in Python. We can represent integers in Python. We already know that minus 1, 2, 0, 1, 5, triple 0, 3, 2, 3 are all examples of integers. Thankfully, we can represent these integers in Python. We can even store them. In Python, there is no limit on the size of integers. We need to understand this, that Python puts no limit on the size of integers. We can have as long integers we want. If you are an experienced programmer, and if you already know C programming language, then you might know this already, that in C programming language, we have a separate type to represent long integers or bigger size integers. We have long type to represent long integers in C programming language. But in Python, there is no separate long type. As it does not make any sense to have a separate long type. I have already told you that in Python, there is no limit on the size of integers. This means we can have as long integers we want. There is no need to have a separate type like long type in Python. Int type is used to represent integer of any size in Python. Also, you need to remember that in Python, there is no need to explicitly specify the type. Python automatically understands the type of a value by seeing that value. So, we do not have to specify the type explicitly. Int type is used to represent integer of any size in Python. Now, we know that we can represent integers in Python. We know that these are all decimal integers. This is how we say, minus 1, 2, 0, 1, 5, triple 0, 3, 2, 3. These are all examples of decimal integers to be precise. Other than decimal integers, we can represent non-decimal integers as well in Python. Now, we will try to understand how to represent non-decimal integers in Python. In Python, non-decimal integers like binary, octal and hexadecimal can be represented by adding a prefix as follows. We can represent binary, octal and hexadecimal numbers in Python. These are all non-decimal integers, as the base is not 10 for these integers. A binary number has base 2, an octal number has base 8 and a hexadecimal number has base 16. Note that decimal numbers have base 10. Okay, so these are all non-decimal integers. In order to represent these integers, we need to add special prefixes before them. Let's see what are all those prefixes. 0 small b or 0 capital B can be used as a prefix to represent a binary number in Python. We can use 0 small b or 0 capital B as a prefix in front of a number to tell Python that the number is a binary number. Similarly, we can use 0 small o or 0 capital O for octal numbers. We can use 0 small x or 0 capital X for hexadecimal numbers. So, we just need to add these prefixes before numbers to represent them as non-decimal integers. Now, how to do this and what happens when we print them is what we need to understand. Note that by default, when we try to print a non-decimal integer, the result will always be an integer. Now, if you don't know how to convert a non-decimal integer to a decimal integer, then it would become difficult for you to interpret the result. 
you'll get confused easily by seeing the result. So, for this reason, we will now try to understand the complete process of how to convert a non-decimal integer to a decimal integer. This means we will now learn how to convert base n to base 10 number. As I have already told you that base 10 represents a decimal number, base 2, base 8, base 16 are used to represent binary, octal and hexadecimal numbers respectively. That is why I have written base n to base 10. We can convert any base number to base 10 number. To convert a base n number to a base 10 number, each digit of the base n number needs to be multiplied from most significant digit to least significant digit with n to the power of its place value and by adding them all. In order to understand this statement, we need to consider the following example. Let's say that we have this number 1010. Zero, one, zero. Now, this is not a decimal number because the base here is 2. This means that this number is a binary number. This represents the base and this is our number. If there is no base, then by default it will be treated as a decimal number. But here we have this base 2, which means that this number is a binary number. Now we need to convert this number to a base 10 number. This means that we need to convert this number to a decimal number. In order to convert this number to a decimal number, we need to multiply each digit of this number, as what is written over here, each digit of the base n number needs to be multiplied from most significant digit, this means from this digit to least significant digit, this means up to this digit, with n to the power of its place value. What is n here? n is 2. We need to multiply each digit by n to the power of its place value. Place value of least significant digit is always 0. And from there, the place value increases as we move left. So, the place value of this digit is 0. Place value of this digit is 1. Place value of this digit is 2. Place value of this digit is 3. So, the most significant digit has the place value 3. We need to multiply each digit by 2 to the power of its place value. And then finally, we need to add them all. This means that we need to multiply 1 by 2 to the power 3. Then 2 to the power 2 must be multiplied by 0. This is what I have written. Then 2 to the power 1 must be multiplied by 1. This is what I have written here. Then we need to multiply 2 to the power 0 by 0. This is what I have written here. Then finally, we need to add all these terms. The result will be 10 base 10. Note the base here. This is not a binary number. This is a decimal number. So, this number is the decimal equivalent of this binary number 1010. Zero, one, zero. I hope this process is now clear to you. Now, let's consider one more example. Let's say this time we want to convert this number to a decimal number. This number is a hexadecimal number. As we can see this, that the base of this number is 16. Now, the process will be same. We need to multiply each digit of this number by 16 to the power of its place value. Place value of this digit is 0. Place value of this digit is 1. We need to multiply 5 by 16 to the power 1 and we need to multiply 0 by 16 to the power 0 and then we need to add them. So, we will get 16 to the power 1 into 5 plus 16 to the power 0 into 0 which is equal to 80. This is the equivalent decimal number of this number. So, in Python, if we try to print this hexadecimal number, we'll get 80 as a result. If we try to print this binary number in Python, we'll get 
10 as a result. As I have told you already, by default we will get decimal number as a result. Later we will understand that how to print the numbers as it is. But right now you need to understand that if we try to print these numbers, we will get their equivalent decimal numbers. Ok, enough of theory. Let's try to print some non decimal numbers on the screen and let's see what we will get as a result. So, we are in our command prompt. Let's type Python first in order to activate Python interpreter. We need to type Python and then we need to hit enter. We'll get these three arrows. This means that interpreter is now active. Now we need to type 0b0101. As 0b is added before this number, this means that this number is a binary number. This is how we can represent binary numbers in Python. Now if we hit enter, then we know that interpreter will simply print the result. And we also know that we will get a decimal equivalent of this number. So when we hit enter, we will get this number, 5. Now this is homework for you. Why we are getting 5 here? You need to follow the same process of conversion of base n to base 10. So do the same thing, try to get this result. Now, interpreter is again active and now it is ready to receive the next command. Let's type 0072. You can also write 0 capital O72 and you can also write 0 capital B here. It doesn't really matter. Here I'm writing 0 small o to represent an octal number. This is an octal number. This is not a decimal number. If we hit enter, we'll get 58 as a result. That is why I told you it is important to understand base n to base 10 conversion because this result might confuse you. Again, we need to follow the same process of base n to base 10 conversion. This time, the base is 8. So, we need to convert base 8 number to base 10 number. Now, let's say we want to know what is the decimal equivalent of 0xff. We'll get 255 as a result. 0x is prefix for hexadecimal number. Note that in a hexadecimal number, the digits are from 0 to 15. 10 in hexadecimal is A, 11 in hexadecimal is B, 12 in hexadecimal is C, 13 in hexadecimal is D, 14 in hexadecimal is E, and 15 in hexadecimal is F. So, F in hexadecimal is equal to 15. So note, in this case, we need to multiply 15 by 16 to the power 0 and we also need to multiply 15 by 16 to the power 1 and need to add the results. So in this way, we will get the equivalent decimal value of this number. This is how we can represent non-decimal integers and now we know what happens when we print them. Okay, this means we are done with integer data type. Now we are ready to understand floating point data type. Float in Python is used to represent real numbers and it is written with a decimal point. This is the difference between an integer and a floating point number. A floating point number is always written with a decimal point. These numbers are all real numbers. To specify the scientific notation, E or E, this means small e or capital E is added at the end of a floating point number. If we want to specify the scientific notation, then we need to use small e or capital E at the end of a floating point number. Let's see what do I mean by this with the help of examples. Again, we are in our command prompt. We need to type python in order to activate the python interactive shell. We then need to hit enter. Python interactive shell is now active. Type this 1.73. This is a floating point number. If we hit enter, we'll get 1.73 as a result. This makes sense. Now observe this. Let's type 1.73 E5. What do we mean by this E5? 
First of all, this is a scientific notation. 1.73 E5 is equal to 1.73 into 10 to the power 5. So, E5 is representing 10 to the power 5. Okay? So, we'll get this value 173000.0. Now, what happens if we write 1.73 E minus 2? I've already told you that we can use small e or capital E. It doesn't really matter. This time I have used capital E. This is 1.73 into 10 to the power minus 2. The result that we will get is 0 0.0173. You can check this on your own. This must be the result. I hope the concept of floating point data type is also clear to you. This means we are done with floating point data type as well. And we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I'll see you in the next one.